it's lovely to be here. Good evening. My name is Andrew Julian Dutton. I'd like to entertain you with a few impressions. Oh, great. And as Christmas is approaching, there are, we've been bombarded, aren't we, with TV adverts? Hundreds of TV adverts. Have you noticed that more and more big stars these days are doing TV adverts? I mean, big Hollywood stars. <laughs> I've seen George Clooney do a TV advert. John Malkovich, even Anthony Hopkins doing TV adverts. I'll tell you what I'd love to see doing a TV advert. I'd love to see Al Pacino doing some of those DFS furniture ads. Hey, Paul. Whatever it made you think, you're going to avoid a DFS furniture sale. Ha! Huh, fuck you. <laughs> For DFS does not just have a sale on in January. Oh no, fuck that. DFS has a fucking sale on every day of the fucking year. <laughs> And if you try to walk out of a DFS store, I will drag you back in. <laughs> It'd be great, wouldn't it? Or how about Dustin Hoffman as the new face of Ron Seal Woodstain? <laughs> All you gotta do is brush it on. I'm working here. <laughs> because Ron Seal does exactly what it says on the tin. <laughs> Fantastic. But you wouldn't have got the Hollywood stars of yesteryear doing TV adverts, would you? I mean, the big Hollywood stars of the golden age, they had a remoteness and a dignity, didn't they? You wouldn't have seen Cary Grant advertising a household cleaner. Now listen very carefully, we haven't got much time. Do you know the name of the most effective household cleaner on the market? Why, it's silly bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Excuse me, officer, I'm trying to explain to the ladies and gentlemen. Silly bang cuts through the most stubborn stains. Ovens, bathroom line scale, toilet germs. Now available in three exciting new odors. Lemon zest, sea breeze, and Norwegian pie. <laughs> you wouldn't have done it, would you? But then, and of course, over Christmas, we're getting lots of lovely old films on television, don't we? Hundreds of old films. I do love old films. One of my favorite actors of yesteryear is John de Mejure, Sergeant Wilson from Dad's Army. Any Dad's Army fans here? Yay! Thank heavens for that. He was a very suave actor, wasn't he? John Avisory, very laid back, very gentle. I think he was miscast in a lot of things, I do. I think he should have played the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> you can imagine it, can't you? Don Corleone. The Barcini brothers have just killed Sonny. Hyman Roth has wiped out 18 of our men in Las Vegas. What do you suggest, a we do? Well, I really think it would be awfully nice. <laughs> If we can all just live together happily, don't you think? <laughs> that really would be absolutely marvelous. I think the heads of the five families should all get together in the marigold tea rooms, all meet them on sea, <laughs> and have a little chat over a nice cup of tea. <laughs> It'll be marvelous. Another writer I really admire from the old days is uh, Foggy, Brian Wilde, Foggy from Last of the Summer Wine, one of those old sitcoms. A very versatile actor, Foggy. Sadly underused. I think Foggy should have played the Robert De Niro character in Taxi Driver. Are you talking to me? No, no, I mean, are you talking to me, lad? <laughs> well, I think you must be talking to me. There's nobody else here. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I better warn you, lad. You know, I'm a trained samurai warrior. <laughs> 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 But I do love those old films on TV, ladies and gentlemen. They're full of stock characters, aren't they? Stock characters. Here's an impression of every single police inspector from every single British film from the 1940s. Hey. I uh, came as quick as I could, Sergeant. Is he dead? <laughs> impression number two. No, because they were all posh in those old films, weren't they? The police in those black and white films, all the police were posh. I was thinking, you know, where are the posh police today? You don't find them, do you? I don't think they fit in, really. You can imagine it, you know. The student riot going on down in London. Yes, I thought they were a cheer. Molotov cocktails flying through the air, barricades up the full works, police cars screeching to a halt. I say, sir, what seemed to be the trouble? <laughs> Bit of a fracker, Wilkins. <laughs> now listen here, everyone. All you young scallywags. <laughs> I think you're being very, very foolish. <laughs> I want you all to drop those fire extinguishers at once. Not there. <laughs> Thank you. 
and jolly well catch the next tram home back to your lodgings. <laughs> Thank you, I'm glad you Otherwise, Scotland Yard will have no alternative but to write a strong letter of complaint to your parents. <laughs> they wouldn't fit it, would they? Possibly, so they wouldn't fit it. <laughs> here, I do love old films, though. They're all proper stock characters. Here's, a, here's every single tramp from every single British science fiction film from the 1960s. I saw it with my own eyes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> came slithering out from behind an edge. And had eight eyes and long green arms, sir. It was horrible. <laughs> it's always a tramp, isn't it? Always a tramp that the aliens attack. But I do love old films and um, also old um, TV series. Um, the other actor in uh, Last of the Summer Wine was, of course, the great Peter Salis. The voice of Wallace from Wallace and Gromit. We love the voice of Peter Salis, don't we? It's like the voice of a kindly old uncle that none of us ever actually had. <laughs> it's a lovely voice. It's calm, reassuring, persuasive. I firmly believe that if Adolf Hitler had had the voice of Peter Sellers, I <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't be honest. I wouldn't be honest. Yes, I've got you on board. If Adolf Hitler had the voice of Peter Sellers, I think the Nazis would almost certainly have won the Second World War. <laughs> Cracking lit screen, girl. What's all the fuss about? I never should have used this stuff. What's all the fuss about? Join in the Nazi fun. <laughs> National socialism is nothing but a combination of state capitalism and Keynesian economics. True, there are a few nickels, totalitarianism, and an ethnic hatred of all ethnic minorities leading ultimately to genocide. But these are little niggles. <laughs> <laughs> we can iron them all out over a nice plate of Wensley Day. <laughs> they would have won them today. They would have won the Civil War. Voices from the past, ladies and gentlemen. We are the television generation, aren't we? We have the voices from a thousand series echoing in our minds. One of my earliest heroes was uh, Patrick Moore, the TV astronomer. Yeah, when I was young, I used to sit in front of a black and white TV set and see Patrick Moore. Forty years later, he's still there. <laughs> but I've always thought that Patrick Moore would have made a marvellous actor. He was, you know, like a grand old man of the theatre. Patrick, he would have, Patrick Moore would have been perfect as Dirty Harry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly how many more bullets are there left in this gun? Well, we just don't know. But it's all very interesting and I'll keep you informed. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, motherfucker, I feel lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, Pat, make my day. That <laughs> would have been marvellous, wouldn't it? Would have been marvellous. But I do love old films, ladies and gentlemen. Voices from the past. Here's every single short, cheerful copy from every single British submarine film from the 1940s. <laughs> <laughs> Don't suppose we'll be having tea at the Ritz tonight, then, eh, sir? <laughs> <laughs> no, Jenkins, I, uh, <laughs> I don't suppose we will. <laughs> Never mind, eh, sir? Tell you the truth, sir, I, uh, I don't much like scones anyway, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it comes to that, Jenkins, neither do I. <laughs> Thank you. It's always a short, cheerful copy, isn't it? Always. There's other films that really get my goat, and we get dozens of these on over Christmas. Hollywood Bible epics. You know, the ones made in the 50s. The ones with people like John Wayne as St. Paul. Truly, he must have been the son of God. What a load of rubbish. But I tell you what, I wish the British had made a few Bible epics in the 50s. We would have, yes, we would have had some marvellous people in People like Terry Thomas as Christ. I say, your disciples are an absolute shower. If I were to walk on the water, I'd tell you I'd walk on the ragged water. I say, you must be Mary Magdalene. And I say, you're an absolute corker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've just turned all this water into wine. 
Would you care to join me for a cheeky little shabby? <laughs> <laughs> it would have been marvellous, wouldn't it? It would have been marvellous. And hot news from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Hot news from Hollywood. I've just heard Robert De Niro has just been cast as Noddy. <laughs> Perfectly true. There's a Hollywood, real-life Hollywood blockbuster version of the Enid Blyton classic. Here's a sneak preview from the forthcoming Noddy the Movie, starring Robert De Niro. What's the matter with your big you fat fuck? <laughs> What's the matter with your big ears, you fat fuck? Did you hear what I say, big ears? No, 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 no. Did you hear what I say, big ears, you fat fuck? <laughs> you think it's easy, big ears, being a taxi driver in Toy Town? You think it's easy driving around at night? <laughs> at night, all the scum come out. <laughs> Mr. Wobbly Man. <laughs> Bumpy dark, all the scum. <laughs> you know, sometimes I wish the rain would come and wash all the scum down the sores where they belong. We want to say big ears. And it's big ears played by, it's gotta be, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Noddy, you're a goddamn greaseball. <laughs> you're doing a great job. And busting my ass. Jesus Christ, won't you listen to me for one goddamn minute of your life? We live in a toy town surrounded by walls. And those walls are guarded by puppets with guns. <laughs> Who's gonna guard them, you? I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a little wooden man <laughs> who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom I provide and then questions the, the very manner in which I provide it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Would you like a gem tart? <laughs> yes, one to look out for. And I, I see that Quentin Tarantino is filming a sequel to Reservoir Dogs. <coughs> An animated film featuring the entire cast from Top Cat. You read it? Here's a sneak preview from the forthcoming Reservoir Cats. What's the matter, you see? <laughs> you got a mighty strange look on your face. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, you just settle down. <laughs> I'm Mr. Tibble, my favorite policeman, I'm so glad you could call. Benny, tie the man in the chair. Yes, please, Steve. <laughs> Choo-choo, fetch my cutthroat razor blade and turn on the radio. Ah, Mr. Dimple, this cat has had about as much as he can take. <laughs> I'm gonna have to cut your motherfucking ear off. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all for me. You've a wonderful audience. Thank you so much. <laughs> Baby, do the dead.